Hey there YouTube, I'm Pruitt, this is Jim Davis, and at WebDM we were doing a little spring cleaning in our show idea cupboard, and we forgot about something. <gasps> Half elves, because they are the forgotten bastards of the races. We're here at Tribe Comics and Games in beautiful Austin, Texas, so let's get rolling. <laughs> All right, Jim. Yes. So we're talking half elves. Half elves. How are they different in fifth edition? What makes them worth a the shit? There's this sort of reputation that half elves, along with bards, uh, have, and it, it's I, I think maybe it's appropriate that half elves and bards are sometimes seen as going together. Yeah. Where prior they're editions, the right? They're going to the prom, but someone else is going to wear the wedding dress. Yeah. Um, and so they're also performing at the prom. Exactly. Yeah. There's a, a, a tradition in Dungeons and Dragons of half elves uh, of just sort of being lackluster. Well, yeah. And you play one because you want the flavor of a half elf, or that's like your character concept that you want. But it's they were always sort of like there were better options if you're mechanically minded or or like to have a good synergy between your race and your class combo. But like bards, fifth edition comes along and says, you know what, we're gonna make half elves desirable to play now, and we're going to make them an option that you look to and go, you know what, I I can see myself picking this race option because I want the versatility of it, I want the the option to have some customization to the stats that I have, extra skills, mm -hmm. and that sort of like fey themed elven flavor that that's so strong in Dungeons and Dragons and that appeals to a lot of people, there's now an option that's like, yeah, you can have this character that's sort of one foot in both worlds, or one foot in each world, right, right. and and it's not going to be the the bad option. You know, people aren't going to look at you like, oh, half elf, really? Right, because they totally like went to the other end of the spectrum as far as what you got from previous editions, right? Because right, right. I mean, like back in third edition, I don't even. I mean, I don't remember much. <laughs> like, because I don't even remember I, ever even considering <laughs> playing a half elf. I never in third did. Edition, I never right? did. And and or, or prior to that, and and yeah. so it was like I don't. It made so little impression on me. I don't even remember off the top of my head what yeah. they were about. And now you get so much. I mean, right. you get like you say, you get that elven fey uh, ancestry, and you mm. get the you get the skill versatility, right. kind of from the humans, but way better. Right. And you right, also right. get. The, those ability score increases yeah. are nuts. Yeah. Create a very versatile character right. that, that can uh, fulfill a lot of different roles. Or if you are, uh, you know, if you if you want like like saying the extra skills or something like rounding out a character concept using those extra skills uh, is is one of the many reasons why you would uh, choose to play a half elf. But kind of like taking a step back for a minute from the mechanics of it, there's mm -hmm. a lot of great flavor and, and themes that half elves bring to the table. That you you know wh whether you're a player or a dungeon master you want to kind of consider for your uh, for your games. So where do they fit in to the game? They're not the Tolkien uh, half elves, right? Like in in the in Middle Earth, the offspring of an elf and a human has to like choose their destiny, right? Like, are yeah. you going to embrace your elvenness and everything that that entails, or are you going to embrace your humanity? And a lot of that's tied up in the concept of the afterlife that exists in Middle Earth and whether or not you have sort of the gift of death uh, that <laughs> that humanity is seen to have. <laughs> the gift of death. Or right. you want to go see the white shores <laughs> right. or whatever. Right, unless, but unless you like physically travel to heaven or something. Yeah. Uh, so like they don't have that going on for right. them. Although it's great to dip into that well and go back to some of the original sources that inspired these races when you're thinking about them because after 40 years of Dungeons and Dragons, the patina of, of authenticity sometimes wears off. And it's good to go back to the original sources and be like, what was it like Mm -hmm. when, you know, for the people that were uh, you know, originally inspired by this. That aside, what you've got is a, a, a race that has ancestry from both the human side and the elven side, although I'd like to sort of open the door to the possibility that it doesn't have to be a human no. necessarily, right? No. That other half can be something else. Where you have humans and elves in your own campaign setting is going to determine a lot about what you do with the half elves in your campaign setting, right? Like yeah. if you've got elves that are reclusive, that are in, on the decline, or that are antagonistic towards other uh, other cultures, other peoples, then you might have half elves that serve as sort of an intermediary between those cultures yeah, and the emissaries elves. back and forth. Emissaries, and so it's like a half elf becomes uh, desirable in that campaign setting, or or being associated with a half elf because they can move between those worlds. Sometimes, or during this season, or or for these years, I live amongst the elves, and then I go out and I travel the lands and make connections with the other peoples mm -hmm. because the elves are just so aloof and so reclusive that 
when they go to other lands, they just don't know how to relate to anybody. Right. Yeah, because <laughs> they, maybe have they no haven't, they, yeah, they've been out for like centuries. And yeah. an entire human empire has risen and fallen. They speak an archaic variety of common, yeah, yeah. And, and so they need uh, people who are more in touch mm -hmm. with, the, with the faster paced, ever changing world that exists outside of the enchanted elven forest. The, uh, like you mentioned, uh, elves that are on the decline that maybe would want to use half elves to extend their legacy just a little bit longer. Right, right, right. Like there's not enough breeding stock amongst sure, the elven yeah. land, so it's like, well, they gotta at least leave something. There's always that concept of, of elves of like, they don't breed that often, or they don't give birth that often, and, the, and when they do, you know, it takes a long time for an elven child to reach maturity, and so their, their numbers are usually rather low. And so mm -hmm. maybe those elves turn to half elves, and you could get sinister with this, right? Like there could be like elven raiding bands that, that raid villages for the best, the best specimens they can find and are take, taken back somewhere. You can like really get dark and creepy with it. Yeah. Or it can be one of these things where in a spirit of sort of openness and, and mutual um, sort of understanding, the elves invite others into their secluded, isolated, enchanted forest places, you know, and throw a party. And the happy offspring that result from it are then accepted into the elven community and, and given a place because mm -hmm. the elves realize like, hey, if we don't do this, no one's gonna remember who we are. We're gonna be forgotten. Right, because I mean, that kind of touches on a point, like a lot of times, it's more with half orcs, but sometimes with half elves, it's thought of, it's like, was that a, was everybody okay with this coupling? Right, right, You know right. what I mean? Well, that's, that's sort of like the Tannis half elven from Dragonlance kind yeah. of thing, where he's, if I'm remembering right, and it's been a long time since I've read Dragonlance, he's yeah. like the only half elf that anyone really knows about. His name's know? Tannis half elven. That's, that's his deal, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the whole point of it. It's always emphasized his humanness, because he's got a beard, mm -hmm. he's very gruff, but I, I recall the character being very introspective and, and, and feeling conflicted about his double ancestry, and then of course, of course, there's the whole baggage with the way that elves work, uh, uh, you know, in the Dragonlance world where they're, yeah. they really are kind of like, don't go into the elven wood. You won't come back out. Oh know? yeah, what was it, Sylvestri or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. anyway, it's been far too long. It's really has again. Been, but um, that's like one way to put it, right? Like, it carries this mark, this stigma, mm -hmm. and is not welcome in human lands, or in, in elven oh, lands. Oh yeah, and yeah is, most where he goes, he's a bastard. Right, you know? and un untrusted in human lands, because it's like, well, what are you? You're gonna live twice as long as we are. Mm -hmm. You're connected with this mystical, secretive society that doesn't want to be part of the world. Like, why should we trust you and bring you in? That's another way to kind of approach half elves. You're borrowing, like I said, some of that half orc mm -hmm. flavor of being an outcast, not being trusted, and instead sort of like, just twisting it a little bit so yeah. that it's a bit more about elves than it is about orcs. There is a spectrum of, of, of good and bad. So moving forward uh -huh. uh, with your character, how do you put your, your half-elf into the world? Like, as far as class-wise, um, as far as where they where they stand in the world, like how would you move forward with that? You're asking like, is there a place for half elves in the world that's not like as outcast mm -hmm. or sort of in this liminal space between the elven and the human? Yeah, if you're not there. the emissary and you're not that, because you're talking about something that's more like ha uh, Forgotten Realms or Eberron, yeah. where half elves are, are almost They're seen ubiquitous. as They're unremarkable. Everywhere. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's just like, oh, it's another half elf. Yeah. and in those settings, you get the impression that half elf is its own separate and distinct thing, like two half elves that get together make another half elf, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so I think that because the, the races and the cultures on those worlds are more mm -hmm. integrated with each other and they have more contact with each other and those worlds are a bit more cosmopolitan, that that's where you get the idea of the half elf as the diplomat and wanderer. Mm -hmm. The one who who is respected amongst many circles because they, they draw upon the good things of their dual ancestry and others recognize that and, and so maybe in those worlds if, if you're like in a world that's sort of like Forgotten Realms or like Eberron, then, then your half-elves there are deeply respected and maybe afforded some degree of diplomatic immunity mm. that allows them to travel from nation to nation and country to country and, and they're seen as sort of like the go-betweens or people who can be trusted. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I draw on things like the maesters from Westeros or something where lords come and go. Yeah. But there's always the half-elf, there's always this figure who's there, who's knowledgeable, who has the skills, who has the resources, who has the experience that someone can draw on. Um, you can do something like that. I think that's a good way to like integrate them into the world. 
Yeah, you just made me think of like uh, like a set of like a whole city of like half elves that live on some kind of lawful plane. Right, right, where right. Everything is specifically regimented. <laughs> and it's like no, you have to marry one of these three people yeah. because you know we have to keep the bloodline you have to, pure, fifty yeah, fifty. But that does bring up an interesting point because maybe you do have a, a city or a setting or some place where ancestry is deeply rooted and important, mm -hmm. and knowing who your ancestors were. And right, we're we're thinking of like. One half of your ancestors, they live for centuries. Yeah. And so you may know your father or mother on the half-elven side, but you might be up to like your great, great, great grandparent on, the, on your human side. Playing with the longevity of the two peoples that come together to make a half-elf, playing with the fact that ancestry and heritage are important. They're clearly, they clearly impart some kind of traits. Mm -hmm. on the on the offspring that you could have a whole culture based around that uh, based around that half elves have variants sure let's run through those right quick what do you give like uh, what do you have to give up you give up your skill versatility skill in order versatility. to gain a trait from one of the elven sub races that are so there. yeah so if you're a wood half elf what would what would you give up those two skills for is the weapon training the fleet of foot or the mask of the wild worth it I mean I think any one of those could be worth it depending on the kind of character that you're making mm -hmm. and and it's it's worth the trade-off to consider because it, it lets you lean into the elven ancestry of the half elf uh, for a minute and mm -hmm. and to kind of customize it a bit. I'm a skill person. I like having a lot of skills, so I'm picking the half elf because of the skill versatility. Two and so I skills. might not I might not always go with the half elf uh, variants, but I like them for their flavor because it's like, yeah, what does it mean to be a half elf in a wood elven society? That's the kind of reclusiveness, the isolation. Mm -hmm. Are do they live on the fringes? Are they welcome in the wood elf mm -hmm. uh, society or whatever? Right, right. Or are they maybe they're like a hunter that sort of lives on the edge of a forest and is the go between between the the you know human village and the elven yeah, the, the, the wood elves bring their skins to the half elves on the fringe and the half elves bring them into the human right, settlement right, right. to trade and which then they bring back. back their whatever. Yeah, or maybe the half elf occupies a place in the wood elf society that's like, the wood elves over here, they're all druids and rangers and woodsy and outdoorsy types, but it's to the half elves that fall the duty of studying arcane magic. Skills that are not otherwise fulfilled by the wood elf community there. In terms of like the mechanics of it, I mean, Mask of the Wild is what their, their ability to like hide and light obscurement and, mm -hmm. and that makes for a great say rogue or ranger or any other class that really likes to be stealthy yeah. or move about particularly in a natural environment yeah fleet of foot can yeah. be good for a lot of different things mm -hmm. and having an extra five feet of movement is you never know when it's going to come in handy particularly if you are playing on a battle grid and yeah, counting yeah. squares and that kind of thing if you want to maybe do that that ha wood half elf uh, monk and just get stupid with the extra movement <laughs> right which you know it's my thing i like i want as much movement i want to be much, like the flash right right right, right. right. you yeah. want as much movement as possible i i can't see picking uh any of the weapon trainings uh mostly because like if if I'm gonna, if the if it fits the concept, then I'm probably gonna get the weapons I need from the class. Right. Unless it's a rogue. Rogue is one of those where I appreciate the elven weapon training mm -hmm. because you know that that's where you get like longbow and, and things like that. That's a, a distant third as an option for me. More likely to go to the extra movement or hiding in light obscurement so that you can lean into sort of the archetypes that you want, like when you go to wood elf. And so for high elf, I mean, uh, getting that cantrip. Yeah, you can, I mean, you do the weapon training, of course, or get the cantrip. It's not bad. I don't know if two a cantrip is a worth cantrip, worth yeah. two skills. I mean, like you were saying, skills in fifth edition, they're kind of hard to come by. Most right. of the times, you're only going to have what four. Yeah, so you being able to get right. fifty percent more skills. Yeah, it's that's it's a big draw for me for the half yeah. elf. But there are some times where a cantrip ties together a concept. Yes. Right. Like I'm thinking of uh, something like rogue and booming blade, or something like that, where you get like one attack. And having one of those melee attack cantrips really boosts the oh, yeah. the damage output on that. That's maybe what I go to. Or maybe you're you're just you want like a mage hand because you don't want to ever have to touch the gross stuff that you find in a dungeon. <laughs> or you want a, ger a germaphobe. <laughs> <Right>. so, <laughs> mm -mm. Uh -uh. No, thank you. Uh, or maybe you got uh, maybe you pick message yeah. because you you want the the ability to communicate with your party members across distances. There's a lot of good picks for that cantrip that you might take that is worth two skills that you would have. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of uh, a question that you would ask. Now, where, does, where do you fit in that, uh, in that world? High elves are typically seen as haughty, arrogant, you know, looking down their, their, their elven noses at the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And so maybe half elves uh, carry some stigma 
and maybe it is one of those things where a half elf and maybe even the half elf's parents are seen as like, why in the world would you do that? Like, you would, why would you mate with a man ape? Yeah. That's just the hairy, gross, rutting man ape. Yeah. And, you know, that you is can, like <laughs> dust in the wind compared to you. Right. right. Their lives are nothing. Their lives are like the gadfly as to our own <laughs> glorious magnificence. Infinitesimal. Right. <laughs> as you can tell, I, our viewers perhaps already know that I've, I have strong opinions about the place of half elves in fantasy society. They're a little arrogant. I also really like them. Yeah. And Anyway, uh, and so maybe you maybe you have that, or it could be sort of an opposite. Maybe the the high elves are ascendant. Maybe mm -hmm. the high elves are like, yeah, we use our longevity in the fact that there are so many of us, or we live for so long that it doesn't matter how many of us there are, and when we need numbers, we just make half elves. Yeah, we, you know, yeah, when we, we need an army, we we make some half elves, and yeah. that's just the time scale that they live on. Yeah, that they're like, well, in about fifty years, we're going to need to go to war, so we better start making our army now. <laughs> and <laughs> let's bring in the humans. <laughs> let's bring in the humans, uh, and y that could be played for dark and sinister purposes. Yes. Maybe that's the crux of say a, a, a tier one campaign, right? Where it's your members of that village, and you're like, oh my god, why are they taking us? Where are we going off in their their ivory towers that they've grown from the ground, kind of thing. Um, or maybe it's something that you introduce later, or it's an important part of your character's uh, backstory. Yeah, and a bunch of half elves show up, like saying, "We are Legion. Right. Expect <laughs> us." Um, of course, the the drow, drow, uh, where you get to trade out. Now, this is the one where three spells three for spells. two skills. Three spells for two skills is tough to pass up. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. getting that, getting that, what dancing lights. Uh, fairy fire and darkness, darkness. Yeah. and I, I like that it scales. So it scales, it, it, sure. It right. makes it feel like you know your your character is kind of coming into themselves yeah. a little bit as they as they grow. I've heard before and read online where people are like, yeah, the half drow, too much, you know, two skills for three spells is an unfair trade off. I can see that. I understand that that sentiment. That's like, oh yeah, that is a little op. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's like, well, you're getting them, you know, one spell level later than if you were just like an arcane caster who could cast fairy fire and darkness, things like that. Right. I think pretty much like a bard is the only one who would actually be able to get both of those, but I may be mistaken. I can see that, and, and they're just doing it once. It's not like that's the big deal, but yeah. I can see some DMs going like, yeah, that's too much for, particularly without sunlight sensitivity mm -hmm. or, or some of the other drawbacks that drow get to make up for the advantages that they have. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I would be tempted to just leave it as is, yeah. but I'm also one of those where I would just go like, I think I'd probably just play a drow. Um, yeah. Mostly because, you know, I well, tend to like drow. Maybe it's fortuitous that we forgot about the half-elf game. Or sure. half-elf. Half-elf show. <laughs> until now, so I could actually talk about this. But in my game, Trey's playing a half-drow. Yes. And I didn't actually look up the half-drow variant. Right, right, And right. we were like, all right, how will we do this? And so he just wanted the fairy fire. He was yeah. like, I don't care about the others. I just want the fairy fire. And I was just like, all right, well, one skill for uh, one, one spell a day. I don't see that's too OP. Yeah, right. And then he wanted the longer dark vision. And I was uh -huh. like, okay, well, you can have that, but you have to take the sunlight sensitivity too. Yeah. The way you get the advantage and you get the, the, the drawback to it. Yeah. And I didn't think that was too OP at all. I mean, other than that, he's just a half elf. Yeah, and I, I think that, I mean, this really comes down to the, the ability to mix and match mm -hmm. characteristics that your character that your that your character has because it's like, yeah, I'm a, I might be a half elf or a dwarf or a dragonborn or whoever, but this one part of the the package of benefits I get doesn't mm -hmm. fit with my character. I think having that flexibility is important, particularly when you're dealing with a character that has one foot in two worlds. Yeah. That you're like, well, uh, you know, we don't know the circumstances of all half elves, right? Like, are they all? Where are they getting this skill versatility from? Maybe they're, you know, it comes from something. Right. Else I mean, they place. haven't done their DNA test from Ancestry.com to see that they got like 48% from the Wood Elves mm -hmm. and like 32% from the humans over here, you know. And then there's actually another <laughs> half elf, like 10% right. somewhere in there, you know. And so, yeah, I mean, they don't have to all be the same. You yeah. can mix and match. And uh, mix and match. finally, uh, there's the aquatic elf, where you get that. You get that swim speed. And, and I, you know, when you need it, it's nice to have. And yeah. in certain campaigns, that's going to be great. Nautical campaigns, oh, pirate dude. campaigns, the island hopping campaigns. Those are ones where it might be needed. If you've got, like, you know, extreme dungeon crawling, where there's a lot of underground rivers and, and, and lakes and things, then you might find that being useful. I see a lot of these variants less as, like, 
they're trying to entice you with mechanics and more saying like, we're gonna give you a benefit because you want the flavor of a certain type of, of half elf. Mm -hmm. And I'm less concerned that like each of the variants are, are mechanically balanced against each other and, and whether or not it's worth the skill trade off and more like if you're in the mood for a half aquatic elf, mm -hmm. is it gonna be worth it to pick that option or are you always gonna be going, man, I really wish, I, I, I mean, I chose half aquatic elf because it's what worked for my character, but I wish I got something else. Yeah, you know? really. So I could see something like, maybe you can breathe for an hour underwater or something. How would you, Jim Davis, okay. play a half elf <laughs> against, <laughs> against type, type with everything that you get? Right, so like, this is the one thing, like, I, I, I like playing against type, I like playing the well-groomed non-alcoholic dwarf. Yeah. I like playing the half orc who doesn't have anger problems and is a well-adjusted person. Yeah. You know, those are the kinds of characters I like playing because they're they're playing against type. But when you're dealing with someone or or you know an archetype that's as versatile as the fifth edition half elf, the only thing I could come to is I'm going to play a half elf that's bumbling, stupid, ignorant, antisocial, just an idiot. So all stats are your dump stats. <laughs> yeah, like charisma is my dump stat, intelligence is my dump stat. I took two stupid skills for my skill versatility. I, I, I can took, see. I took glass blowing <laughs> and 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 and, and shoe crafting. Right, like I finagled some tool proficiencies with those instead of instead of actual skills. I made glass slippers for the rest of my life. Right, right. That's actually. And. Uh, <laughs> Magic glass slippers. Uh, actually, right. okay. actually, you can always turn a stupid idea into a good idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of what I would do. You know, okay. it's a, a, a half elf character who maybe resents their position as an in between these two cultures. A, a half elf who sees the fact that they're never going to be accepted in one and never going to be accepted in the other. A seed, that, that grain of sand that becomes a pearl of hate yeah. that, that they then use to be just be like, yeah, I don't care about any of these people. I'm not a diplomat. I'm not, I'm not your, you know, go between yeah, it, my own man. Yeah, it's that angsty pebble in their shoe of life that right. they can never get rid of. Well, listen, and there's a lot of hate that gets thrown at angsty characters, right? There is a lot, and a lot of it comes from me. Yeah. But there's something satisfying about playing an angsty character in a way that doesn't make life a pain in the ass for the rest of your group. Mm -hmm. and, and a character that has a, a mixed heritage ancestry, that doesn't have a solid place in the world, is a good fuel for an angsty type character that deals with that and that grows over the course of a campaign. My big thing with all characters, including ones that are annoying and, and you, might not, you might want a skilled role player playing that character, or at least in sympathetic group, is that they should change. There should be some kind of development, yeah. and some kind of growth for that character. And in that respect, Half-Elf is really good because there's so much complication in their background. The dungeon master can like use that, and you have the opportunity as a player to then say like, well, yeah, I've got this character who can grow in so many different ways and react to so many things and has ties to all these different communities that are in the game world, and, and I have the opportunity to like play that out at the game table and mm -hmm. see how it goes and how my p fellow players react to it. In that case, uh, you know, half-elf is a, a, a rich option that, that provides you with a lot of fodder. And while he's not a half-elf, using it as a good template for the way to play your character is Jon Snow. Sure, yeah. Like, if you want to go that route. Right, the right, angsty right. bastard of me, oh, you know, oh. Right, and, and the like... The world will always remind you, so. Right, and, and like Jon Snow, at, at some point you need to shed that angst and embrace your power. Wear it like armor. Know, and wear it like armor mm -hmm. and, and show the world why they should to trust you and, yeah. and and believe in you. I'm glad that they took that the, the designers of 5th edition took the time to make a race option that was worth it. Mm -hmm. And that it seems like, I mean, I'm not I don't have an insight into their process or anything like that, but it seems like that looking at prior editions, iterations of the half elf saying like, well, what was missing in those, what wasn't working, and then creating something that is desirable for play, that's full of rich character options. Um, like, in that respect, I've, I'm, I've made a couple of half elves in fifth edition and I don't regret it. And I really like them and glad that it's a better option than it used to be. Yeah, I mean, it really did go from like, the worst to the best. <laughs> Almost one of the best. <laughs> it's a really good option. I mean, it, yeah. it's an amazing option. Yeah. I try to fart on camera.
you could give me at the end of it a don't fart. Don't fart. It was a little. It was a tiny. It was a tiny one. No, it was just a tiny one. That's called poot. Don't strain. So uh, how, how do you feel about, about wood elves and, and the being able to trade off of, of things? I feel you. <laughs> so I feel about wood elves like, you. this is one where the, that reclusiveness of the elves, the isolation of them can really come into play. And so what we've got is a- Can we take a, a timeout? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just like- You wait for a second. We are shooting in an open comic uh -huh. book store. Yeah. And can we turn off? Can I ask him to turn off the Dane? Or anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have talked that. to him about the Dane. Apparently, we don't know how to turn off. The okay, Dane. it's fine. I just. All right. Sorry. Let's, let's just continue. Still rolling. Still rolling. Sorry. It's just you I was. Pick it up from that question. Can I get that question one more time? And yeah. And we're okay. Cool. No, no, no. Now I got my now I got my mind right. Sorry. I'm no, just no, no, I'm no, just no, used no, to no, completely no, silence. Okay. I totally Pru just, like just I could see Pruitt's <laughs> focus. <laughs> like real. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Um. So. Yes. 